Hi everyone, my name is Heather and I am Audrey and Kate's mom and I thought I'd give you guys a little weekly update and I'm already behind. I'm not good at this kind of stuff. I set a schedule and then like right away I'm already missing it. <laughs> it's the only kind of one I can like stick to is when it has to be every day. You know, like then there's no escape. You have to do it that day. But when it's other stuff, I just get blah. The week goes way too fast. So this month is going way too fast. This whole year has gone way too fast. I still don't believe we're already at the end of it all. It's kind of crazy. So, uh, yeah, so we're working like crazy to try to get ready for Christmas, for New Year's, all those things that are big here. So um, I thought I'd, um, in terms of like just updates and families and stuff, there's not really too many things going on. We're all still really healthy, so nobody's caught in the flu yet, which is a good thing. <sighs> Hope nobody gets sick. Uh, it always happens that somebody gets sick when we're on vacation and in, you know, the States, you know, even if it's a holiday, there's emergency care places that are open and uh, you, usually there's something you could do to, to take care of yourself. And in, in Japan, it's like that too. There is emergency care. But um, when we when we get to the actual end of the year and we get to New Year's, uh, you actually get a big chunk of time off and um, local doctors and, and uh, you know, um, pharmacists and um, dentists and stuff like that, they all take a long, a lot of time off. And veterinarians, they all take a lot of time off. It's not just, oh, it's New Year's, so you have that one day off. It's like, no, they're closed all the way through like the fifth or sixth or something sometimes, um, depending on the place. So you have to kind of beware and be careful and be ready because <laughs> otherwise they'll sneak up on you and you'll be like, ah, oh wait, I can't go. I <laughs> have They're not back yet for like a really long time. And then that whole week when they are back, after is crazy so you have to kind of spread it out a little bit if you can so today Audrey and Kate and I all three of us we're gonna go to the dentist so uh, Audrey and Kate go to the dentist once a month to have uh, fluoride kind of treatments on their teeth um, water in Japan does not have fluoride in it so um, you know that's a pretty common thing to do for kids to kind of give you an extra boost of protection for your teeth um, it's not like it's a big deal. It's just like a little toothpaste and they're done. So we just leave. But, um, in general, uh, you know, taking care of your teeth in Japan is, it's a pretty big deal. I mean, obviously people try to have clean teeth, but it's sort of weird because it's like, um, especially when kids are younger, there's sort of this thinking that, you know, oh, they're baby teeth. So who cares? They're going to fall out anyway. You don't need to do anything about it. So I was really surprised when I was first moving here to see so many kids, not just with like a cavity, but like with gaping holes in their teeth. There was one kid who actually literally had a hole in his tooth because of a cavity. And, you know, the parents were like, eh, you know, who cares? It's just a baby tooth. It'll fall out anyway. And the whole ordeal of going to the dentist is too scary for the kids. So they just don't even go. And, um, which I was like, what? That's just weird. <laughs> so, I mean, we, I took my girls to the dentist all the time. They hated it. Uh, they, they still hate it. They're miserable, but <laughs> I know it's not a fun place to go, but, um, we still go to try to take care of things. And, you know, uh, I think even though we try really hard to brush our teeth really well, the food in Japan creates a, sort of a difficult environment for, for brushing your teeth. Having a rice-based diet is pretty hard because it creates this stickiness on the enamel and that kind of like holds on to stuff even more. Uh, so it's not like an excuse to have a cavity, but it's pretty common to get them, of course, and it's not that big of a deal. And as your teeth get stronger when you get adult teeth, you know, then you don't need to worry so much about it. But when I was a kid, if you got a cavity, wow, that was like the end of my life in my house. <laughs> I think it's because, you know, dental insurance is like, no, that doesn't even exist in the States. And so it was really expensive to go to the dentist. And so we were kind of, my brother and I were kind of like, you know, military trained to brush our teeth really good because it was, you know, considered like a sin to get a cavity when I was a kid. So um, my brother, he had like a little tiny half cavity and I don't think he's ever lived it down. So <laughs> I think, you know, we, uh, and on the flip side, actually, I've created a really bad habit of brushing my teeth too hard. And so that's not a good thing. But um, so, I mean, there's got to be a happy medium between the two, right? <laughs> you can't be too crazy all the time about it. So, so we're going to go today to the dentist. And like I said, they, they've taken care of big problems, but obviously if it's a problem that, um, for the kids especially, that involves like having 
to take out the tooth or something like that. If it's something that can wait, then they always suggest waiting because they don't want to traumatize the kid. They don't think it's necessary to do treatments that you don't necessarily need to do yet. And so a lot of times, if there was something wrong, it's always been, you know, let's kind of wait and see, let's kind of wait and see. Oh, wait, it's okay, it's bad enough, we do need to fill it because it's a little cavity. And then we just kind of go through the motions to see what, what comes up later. Um, but it was certainly more, you know, let's try not to do too much because they are kids. Um, and, and you see a similar kind of thinking at the doctor's office too, because they're really weird about getting your vaccinations. Um, you can only get like, you get one and then you're like not allowed to get another, any other kind of vaccine for like a month, you know? And sometimes depending on the strength of the vaccine, they make you come twice and like they half end the vaccination and give it to you twice. Uh, the flu shot is like that for kids. You have to come and get it twice. And I don't know what it's like for kids in the States. I don't remember them having to go twice. I think you just get it once. And when Audrey, when we moved to the DC area for a year and a half, when she was three, she went to preschool. And when she was gonna to go to preschool, she had all these vaccinations that she needed to get taken care of. So we went to the doctor and they were like, okay, let's just do four of them in one shot. Boom, 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 boom. Two in each arm, and one in each arm and then two in each leg. Uh, one in each leg, I'm like, I can't add. But four in one shot, Maso's dying. He's like, oh my God, what kind of country is this? This is crazy, you know? And I'm like, ah, it's normal. <laughs> we just like, eh. Is there more places we can get a shot to? You know, we don't really care. Um, so there's that, you know, very definite kind of let's wait until we go forward with stuff kind of thing. And um, I suppose that crosses over a little bit into how often people will be given medicine for things. Um, if you have a condition like allergies or something, doctors aren't like, oh, let's get you some medicine to take care of you because you need to do what you need to do to take care of yourself. So they're not weird about that. But there is a whole um, holistic kind of, uh, or like um, herbal kind of market of medicines that come from China that are very popular here called Kampo. And so if you go to the drugstore, they have all of those there too. So you'll find a lot of medicines that are in that Kampo kind of line of medicines that people can take that are not actually you know medicine medicines, but are a natural kind of remedy for things. And some of them work pretty good, you know, I think there's different kinds of them for different things, but, um, you know, they're pretty popular, especially with older generation people. So you do see a lot of that. And um, so, you know, going to the dentist and, and all that kind of stuff, it's more about, you know, just what is the bare minimum? So going to the dentist, if you do have something big, like a root canal, God forbid, right? I mean, in the States, I never had a root canal, so I don't know, but I'm pretty positive they try to get it done all in one day, you know? I mean, obviously, if you if you have a, a filling or a, a crown or something to have fitted, then you have to go back once that's been t finished and made. But, um, you know, here, it's like they spread it out into as many different times that you they can make you come. Um, even just big teeth cleaning jobs. I was supposed to every three years at the place that I go to, they recommend or they, they tell you that you have to do a massive cleaning um, or they, you know, they just give you a lot of grief. They, they can't really like tell you if you don't do this, you can't come here, but they give you that look that makes you feel like you have to do it. So, <laughs> so they, but they broke that up into four visits because they cleaned the upper front, the upper behind, the lower front, and then the lower behind. And so I was like, oh my gosh, why is this taking so long? Why do I have to come here every week? Because we, we chose to go to a place that is actually where Masa's mother lives. And so we go there every week anyway to see her, but um, it's not like really close where we can just drive over there in two seconds, it takes an hour to get there. So that's lame. <laughs> so that's kind of the way dentists work here, I guess, in that sense. Um, you know, and uh, I, I, you know, I'm in a system where I have to go every three months for the general checkup, and then once a year you get a uh, um, x-ray done of your teeth, and like I said, once every three years or something, they do this really big massive cleaning um, if you don't have any problems and stuff. So, uh, you know, and the dentists are really nice. The dental assistants are really nice. It's kind of like a lot of other dentists I've been into the, in the States too. They're, you know, usually smaller, you know, independent kind of offices and and you'll you know in Japan unlike in the states because there is no 
um, insurance, but nationalized insurance. Uh, there is no kind of like um, group of them that all hang out together, kind of like doctors do in the States where you have different, you know, Kaiser, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, all those kinds of different groups uh, that, you know, obviously are, uh, you know, insurance companies that kind of create a group of doctors. Um, they don't do that here because it's nationalized medicine. So you can go to whoever you want, whenever you want, as long as somebody gives you a recommendation. So, uh, and on that front, if they do write a recommendation for you to go, you do have to kind of pay a fee to have that written. So that you do have to do. Um, but, uh, you know, it's not like that big of a deal usually. So, um, but yeah, so we'll be going there and then I'll be going to pick up some medicine for, um, Kate too, because she's still going to be taking her blood pressure medicine to kind of help with feeling dizzy and stuff. So when we go to the dentist though, because even because it's nationalized and because we're just doing simple stuff like cleanings, um, it only costs like, you know, $10 to go probably for each of the kids because they're doing the fluoride treatment. It takes about 10 and cause I'm doing like a checkup cleaning. I'm also 10. So it's like $30 for three of us, which I know is really cheap. Um, and then at the doctor, if you go, the doctor visit can be usually $8 or something like that for the visit. And then if you have, um, some medicine, of course, that's a different price, you know, depending on what it is, uh, more than doing like they do in the States because you're in an insurance plan and you get a prescription and it's a flat rate prescription. It is more based on just what kind of drug it is. So, um, you know, you can get pretty good deals on stuff. And then as you get older, you can get better benefits too. Moss's father, he gets medicine uh, and he barely pays anything because he's older and because he's got, uh, he had a, a colon cancer when Audrey was born and surgery for all of that. And so because he has the colonoscopy and he has a colonoscopy bag, because of that, he's like kind of considered like a, a low grade, um, handicap kind of level so he can get discounts at things you know discounted train rides and discounted uh bus rides and discounted medicines too so that's really kind of a cool thing that's about it here so i wouldn't say anything i've ever paid that much to to do anything when when we were here so that part of it's been pretty good you know i can't remember i was going to think about like how much it was when i had the girls uh when for having a baby and i think it was like I think it was like three thousand uh, dollars, but we stay for a week, and it's uh, the place I went to was uh, that you stayed at a week, and it's like kind of like a private place. It's not a big uh, city run. There is that option of a city run hospital, and you can stay a couple nights then there. There, but the place I went to is more specific to ha you know like a birthing hospital kind of place, and you stay for the whole week, and they. Um, they have a whole organized meal system planned for you where they have special nutritionists cooking meals for you. So you just go down to the cafe and they have all the food all ready for you. Or if you want, you can have it delivered to you in your room. Um, everybody has a private room and, you know, family members can come and visit and you can all hang out together. And on the last night before you leave, they have a special night where they invite the father over. And so you get to have a nice, uh, you know, fancy uh, wine and candlelight dinner before you go home, which is really cute. That's cool. Um, and then also because they don't, you can't maybe bathe, bathe as often as you like to right away afterwards. They do like special S days and, um, you know, massages and stuff like that, tr hair treatments and things. So that, that part, I was like, what? This is nice. I'm gonna have a baby every day. This is cool. <laughs> And then at the time when both of the girls were born, they had a rule in the government to try to encourage people to have babies because there's not enough people having babies in Japan. You get paid $3,000. So you're basically cutting out, getting breaking even from that, which was really good. So it's basically free to have a baby then, uh, depending on where you go and stuff. And so, and they still have that now. And it's even getting to be worse of a problem in Japan that we're just not having enough kids. I think this is the first year that the population officially decreased instead of increasing. So, uh, not enough people having kids. So, um, they're definitely trying to encourage people to have babies. So, uh, but that's all part of, you know, the nationalized medicine and systems like that. And the nationalized medicine is set up so that you pay a percentage of your income to pay for your insurance. And it covers the person who works and his, then he or hers or his family, uh, depending on where it is. 
Um, if you work at a, at a business, they then pay for that for you out of your paycheck, and it covers your, uh, your spouse and your children. Um, if you uh, are privately in employed, then you have to pay it yourself. And they calculate that based on your tax return, and then you get a bill based on however much you make. So if you're pretty wealthy, then you wind up paying more. Uh, and if you're pretty poor, you pay next to nothing. And uh, for like Moss's father, who's retired, he's just living off of Social Security now. Uh, he barely pays like $50 a month, I think, for his health insurance, which is crazy. Uh, so yeah, nice, nice thing, right? Mm. But you can only uh, get that if you are a Japanese citizen or if you are, uh, you know, officially an alien, a registered alien like I am. Yeah, you guys are always thinking that Audrey's an alien. Her mom is an alien, so I have an alien card that proves it. So, <laughs> but uh, that's yeah, just random thoughts. I feel like I'm like kind of going in a big weird circle talking about things from just starting with the dentist. But that's what we're doing today. So. Um, so yeah, if you guys have something you'd like for me to talk about, please let me know. I'll probably, of course, talk about things like Christmas and New Year's here as the month goes on so you guys can know a little about what we do and what's common in Japan and stuff. But if there's something specific you'd like me to talk about, you can just leave a comment in the community section or, of course, you can leave any comments on Twitter and Instagram and all those places and um, I think we'll find it. <laughs> so <laughs> you can tell me anytime. So. Um, thanks you guys so much, you know, for all your support and I hope you all have a wonderful, safe, uh, holiday season as we get started here. So take it easy and, um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys, uh, next time. Bye.